And so I started to notice like, oh, okay, there's a degree. Like if I eat certain things, like I'm gonna get the itis. Now I eat certain things, I'm just gonna need a little bit of time off. And I eat certain other things, then there's no problem. Or mm -hmm. um, I probably need to spend less time worrying about eating and just knowing that I'm gonna get some down after I eat. Yeah. So I'm going, okay, well, what does that look like? Then I started to like research and read around like, okay, well, your mind actually focuses a little bit better when you are fasting. Um, and then I started to deal with the, the discomfort of being hungry. Right. And what it helped me realize was like how my body actually works. I started to notice the little pings and pangs in my body and so on and so forth. And it helped just raise a general awareness of how I check my body down through my mind. Yeah. And I can notice like, oh, your mind is floating. Yep. Like when you're, you start when you're to fasting, you start to just flow. see. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Stay Sharp. I'm Jordan Ray, and this is Rashad Tyler. Yeah. Stay Sharp is a video series where we really focus in on best practices and useful applications during your creative approach. So wherever you are in your journey, um, first time entrepreneur, seasoned entrepreneur, you're either going to have insights with us, mm -hmm. learn a couple things, or you might already know about some of the stuff that we're talking about, but today, we trying to get right into food and drink and how what we <laughs> consume really affects our creative output. Right. Um, so I'll kind of hand it over to you. Um, it's funny how like uh, in creative industries, we don't realize that our bodies are still super duper critical to our day-to-day -day performance. Mm -hmm. It's as if like uh, we kind of uh, think of uh, uh, physical training and, and physical, um, how do I say, like maintenance is the job of the athlete, the professional athlete. And, and what you find is the most successful performers have uh, really stringent diets and exercise routines right. and sleep patterns that help support them perform Whether well. they're an athlete or not. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I think that's something that is very important, um, especially the both of us, you know, we do have athletic backgrounds. And I know some of you watching may have an athletic background, maybe you don't. It's one of those things that there is a strenuous amount of work sometimes that has to be done when you are yeah. in the creative world. So it's kind of like being an athlete. It's right. like that meme right now that's going around, like what feels, what feels like a sport that isn't. Right. Or whatever. And it's means. not that being having an athletic background is necessary, right? It's not prerequisite. No. And I think, you know, there's like probably an over index for team sports and what that means, although I think it's really useful to have played. Yeah, but what, you know, what I'm saying is is that whether you you're an, a former athlete or you're not, mm -hmm. I'm saying that creativity is oh, a 100%. sport. 100%. And there's Business a meme, is a sport. Yeah, there's a meme going on right now that's like um, or a hashtag or a trending topic. It's it's something along the lines of, you know, what feels like a sport, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. And people mm -hmm. are like grocery shopping, you know, like <laughs> cleaning the bathroom, like, you know, different things like that. Like it, it ain't a sport, but it feel like it. And it's right. one of those things like creativity is definitely that or a creative career. Right. It is definitely a sport and you are definitely an athlete, whether you are or not, you an athlete. We right. all athletes, that's like Nike's thing too. Like we all athletes. Right, I think uh, even to, to piggyback on the, the lack of application for certain things like athlete and what that means and then like i think seth godin really popularized the idea that everybody's an artist yeah right yeah so it, it that statement if there was something that caused a knee jerk for you personally like no everybody's an artist everybody's an athlete because you have a responsibility to uh execute certain athletic things whether it is something as small as pick up the basket from the laundry room or right. you know make sure that your mind is able to do the things that it needs to do on a day-to-day -day basis which requires you to move your ass yeah exactly and I think those are things too that help um, I know that help us in our creative mm -hmm. journeys to not actually hit that creative block or that writer's block that is to me a concept that like I understand it, but it's a concept to me that I don't really believe in. Like I don't believe that like 
oh, like I just like I'm I don't have any creativity for the next couple weeks because mm -hmm. if you are a creative that is making a living being creative, you gotta find a way to be able to produce. Yeah. Like you know you can't just like oh well I just don't got it for a couple of weeks. Then what you gonna do? It's funny like I, I, we've had this conversation so many different times about so many different people that we may work with like those especially that perform at a super duper high rate super consistently they don't need or have the same layoff that some other people might have. Mm -hmm. So for example, like somebody who is a consistent runner and has a great diet, they don't need the rest periods that people who are not on a consistent diet and you know other regimens. Right. They recover faster and they can go harder in the times where they're going, right? And it's really paying that price of uh, building and training. The price of building and training allows them to be better maintained and thereby, thereby better perform over time. Yeah. So what's something that you consume maybe on a daily basis mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, every other day or one, what's one of the things that you consume? It can be solid or drink or whatever that is right. that you feel like helps you perform at a certain level. Uh, well, two things, because I want to get back to one of them. One of them is fasting. So it's what I'm not eating or mm -hmm. not eating is a part of this too. Yeah. Um, uh, this, the, but the first thing, which should be popular by now, this is the first time you heard of it, you know, like I get it, but everyone should have heard of Athletic Greens by now. If you're not leveraging Athletic Greens in your day-to-day -day, um, uh, nutritional insurance, like you're making a mistake. Um, I know that people oftentimes index for taste. This is not a thing that tastes bad. Mm -mm. And I think even if you did index for taste, I think you probably should work on not indexing, you know, everything that you consume yeah, for taste. Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> not everything that we have to eat or drink as an adult yeah. is gonna taste good. Yeah. But Athletic Greens is a it's a powder and it has like, I don't know, like a crazy amount of nutrients, um, vitamins and different, you know, just like I don't know, things that we need to mm -hmm. ingest. And it is very easy to mix with water. I think that you can mix it with like juice or something, like okay. if you are indexing for like taste, but like Rashad and I really just mix it with water. Like I said, it's a powder, just scoop, you know, into a water bottle, um, stir it or shake it. Mm -hmm. And you know, like at the top of your day, um, there's also been moments where like I might have been under the weather or I feel like, you know, I've had to, like maybe you go a week and you haven't really been able to sleep well. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, there's a lot of deadlines or something, you're not sleeping a lot. It is something that puts a little pep in your step when you feel like right. your immune system might be kind of, you know, right. compromised because of work or something. It's like, I, I remember there was a time frame there where like airborne was a popular thing. And it may still be, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I'm going like, yo, why wouldn't you just take airborne all the time? This is what I'm thinking and I didn't do it of course, but this, is exactly that. Airborne yeah. was supposed to be like, as soon as you start to feel a symptom, you drink airborne born, and then the, whatever it is that's ailing you won't fully mature and you won't get all the way right. sick. Right, same with like emergency. Right, those, this yeah. is like something that's supposedly preventative from getting worse, right. right? And so this is exactly the same type of application, it's just you can also play offense with it. Mm -hmm. So it's not just protecting you from getting sick, um, it's also giving you the best chance at performing at a high level because you're not right. um, nutrient deficient. Yeah, yep. And another thing too with, with that, something that might be super slept on, but everybody's heard of this, is water. Like just <laughs> water straight up because if we're comparing being a creative or a professional creative to being an athlete, mm -hmm. you have to make sure that you're hydrated and um, if you're not already a water drinker, I'm, you know, I'm not sure if it's, you know, maybe bottled water yeah. is your thing. You know, like maybe um, you don't like the way that water out of the tap tastes or something. And you I'm know, we can, we can talk drinker. about water yeah. a, for yeah. days. Yeah, everybody knows I drink the tap water. <laughs> it's a way of me checking my toughness and, you know, I have my quirks in, in, in that way. Yeah, Rashad, yeah, you definitely drink the City Punch. Yeah. Um, but for anybody that's watching or listening, it's like, man, like I'm trying to get into water, I'm trying to drink more water. You know, you've got the big jug and you trying to drink it down or you know how many ounces of water a day you should be consuming, but you just can't really like 
you know get to it maybe try a different kind of water like try a different type of bottled water because they all taste different so you may actually find a water that you like the way that it tastes or it feels a little bit more velvety as you you yeah. know drink it or something like that but water is something that at the top of your day before you have your coffee or before you have anything else like make sure you're drinking a glass of water because that can it just it enlightens you and it helps it almost clears your brain a little bit of any mm. fog you might be in. Mm. It's funny, um, even you mentioning like coffee and caffeine and stimulants. So the thing that between us, like we don't use any stimulants. Right. And I have to say a couple things before I even go further with that particular point or on that, that, that particular tangent. I was a person who would get headaches because I would work really, really hard, really long hours. I would get headaches and I would have to shut down at the end of every week or at the end of every like sprint period where I'm just like either working on a project or like traveling or whatever that might have looked like. And I would just get headaches and my body would shut down. Right. And so like I needed something to help that stop happening. And that's when I discovered Athletic Greens and I probably like went years before I had like a headache. Yeah. And even when I did get like, you know, a mild headache, I just went to sleep for an hour or so and it was totally gone and it was very mild. And what we also found was that a lot of times when you're getting headaches, it's not that anything's really deeply wrong with you, you're probably dehydrated. Yes. And so handshaking those two things, like right. putting in the nutritional things that can really give you some real some real support. Mm -hmm. and being hydrated consistently. Yeah, is those small game. things are like, okay, well, let's start there and then let's get into the more of the complicated things. Right. So before I ask you the About next the question. Stimulus, I wanted to make sure I hit on the stimulus piece too. Okay, we'll finish. Well, the, the in your diet, you have to try to figure out what things are necessary and what you depend on and what things are actually hurting you over time, mm -hmm. right? So what we all know is, is when we take stimulants, we end up needing more stimulants over time because our body becomes too get, dependent. Or, yeah, yeah, dependent, and mm -hmm. then we start to dull on sure. it. I'm not sure what the right way to phrase it is, but it seems like the more um, you become, and this is the, the value of being downtown, you get to hear all of these incredible uh, passers by. Uh, hopefully nobody's super hurt, but um, one of the things that we try to do again to kind of get back on track is we try to avoid putting stimulants into our bodies or trying to depend on things like that because we need to know that if we don't have access to it we can still perform at a high level yeah no totally so there's a bit of philosophy underlying that kind of approach yeah and this is definitely a, a really deep conversation about because all of us are consuming something mm -hmm. like we're all eating or we're all drinking certain mm -hmm. things um, before I ask you the next question that I have, I want to also just make sure that you know, the conversation that we're having, it's not a one size fits all. And I think that yes. everybody's, you know, all of our diets, our metabolism, um, the things that we have a taste for, the things that we have a distaste for, it's yeah. all different. So anything that we're like throwing out or we're talking about right now, it's not to say that like, you need to be doing this because da, 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 da. it's more so like this is what we've found that works or doesn't work for us and this is why like this is literally Correct. how we've thought about it how we've come to this conclusion we're just sharing so it's definitely not one size fits all like do your thing and if you have anything too that you feel like has really worked for you please hit us up with that like leave that in the comments or whatever um the mm -hmm. next thing that you mentioned was fasting and how actually what you don't put in your body and the amount of time you go without eating has really helped you to like focus in on you know right. certain things i think there's a lot of reasons that fasting became a conversation um when i was one of those weird people uh especially when black people, one of those weird people well I, I guess i am still one of those weird <laughs> people but it, a lot of things we're talking about now have become far more um palatable to like the general public and when I was thinking about them or kind of first deploying them personally, I was even more of a weirdo. Right. One Rashad of was, is a very early adopter. I hope on to a be. lot of things. <laughs> I hope to be. <laughs> but like uh, the the reason, well, there were two things like meditation, which you can get to, and that's probably an entirely different conversation, right? It is. Um, it, but <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, uh, with fasting, 
I noticed that I was um, I was slowing down the more that I ate. And I was trying to figure out like, why is it that I wasn't picking up steam as I ate food, mm -hmm. even if it was good food? Yeah. Right. So I started to notice like, oh, okay, there's a degree. Like if I eat certain things, like I'm gonna get the itis. Now I eat certain things, I'm just gonna need a little bit of time off. And I eat certain other things, then there's no problem. Or mm -hmm. um, I probably need to spend less time worrying about eating and just knowing that I'm gonna get some down after I eat. Yeah. So I'm going, okay, well, what does that look like? Then I started to like research and read around like, okay, well, your mind actually focuses a little bit better when you are fasting. Um, and then I started to deal with the, the discomfort of being hungry. Right. And what it helped me realize was like how my body actually works. I started to notice the little pings and pangs in my body and so on and so forth. And it helped just raise a general awareness of how I check my body down through my mind. Yeah. And I can notice like, oh, your mind is floating. Yep. Like when and you're, you start when you're to fasting, get into you start to just flow. see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you start to see. I think that was something that I was able to really start to understand um, when, before we really started Rare Label, um, I was working at the barbershop and I would have, you know, just clients all throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, those moments when I would take a lunch, you know, for 30 or 45 minutes and go get something and like, stuff my face or whatever because I felt like I was so hungry like mm -hmm. I needed food and then I went back to my afternoon evening clients I was just like I couldn't focus on the haircut like I couldn't focus on the conversation um there was a lot of like I mean I crashed basically but I still had to perform right. and so I was like okay that doesn't feel good to try to you know like work through being tired from consuming food right. so it was one of those things where I was like, okay, well, let me skip lunch and just push through because I know I'm going to eat later mm -hmm. um, and start to, like you said, deal with that discomfort. Like, okay, I'm just, you know, I'm not going to eat or whatever. And you get past the discomfort after you do it, you know, several times, right. you'll get used to it. And then it's one of those things where you're like, okay, when I do have a really, really busy day, whatever you whatever you're doing you might be on set one day or directing a video or you might be you might have just a lot of freaking phone calls one day and your mind needs to be sharp so you really just have to go without skip food the meal. like yeah. skip the lunch um and then figure out and like i said it's not for everybody mm -hmm. and, and like fasting is even something that um i am i'm not near as experienced as you are with it but it is something that if i know i have a busy day like I will just not eat for the for the busy part. Right. That six or eight hours, like I'm just not gonna stop for lunch because it's right. actually gonna hurt me. It's gonna slow you down. And I think we all know that, but we're not given enough um, reliable information about the benefit of it. And more importantly, we're probably just afraid of the, 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 the discomfort. Right. That's the first hurdle. I remember sharing like, oh yeah, like, oh, you're so skinny. Uh, you just have metabolism. I'm like, nah, bro. I was up 20 pounds, you know, from where I am today when I was in my early, like, early 20s. Yeah, right. You know, and but not not for nothing. I, you know, intended to get that big, right? Yeah. But the 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 problem was I was not more energetic. Um, you know, when I was eating healthier and eating more frequently, mm -hmm. it was literally just understanding that there's a benefit to having an intermittent fasting routine or um, just a real clarity about when you eat, you're probably going to take a bit of an energy dive, right. knowing that's a part of it. So but, just being smart about what right. you choose. But also choose knowing then, like even in part of that energy dive, there's a way that you can ruin your day where the recovery time is going to be three, four, five, or the next day. Yeah. You know, like that's if you have pizza and a cocktail, you ain't trying to work, right? Right. But if you decide, okay, I'm going to eat something that is high fat, depending on what your diet is. Like, mm -hmm. you know, my diet is high protein, high fat, low carb. I eat something high fat, I'm going to turn up right. after that. Right. And I'm able to get longer days, thereby longer weeks, and thereby better, more productive yeah. months and years. And so to think, to kind of like, even like button that a little bit, 
I think that we've done, and you've especially done a lot of just looking into, okay, how can I really maximize my time and my and my working energy because as a creative you know that you're going to have these moments where you're highly creative you're peaking you're at your best basically or however that looks it's different for everybody but then you're going to have your moments where yes like you are a little bit more lethargic maybe that's early in the morning or maybe it's late at night or however it is but we've really been able to do some dissecting on okay like how can I make sure that I can take on the workload that I want to take on? Mm -hmm. I can be the creative that I want to be, but I have to start with what I'm putting into my body because that's going to directly affect my output. And right. that is why, you know, we do eat the way we eat, but I also want to get into, I also want to get into the things that we eat and that we really enjoy yeah. that actually, that make us take that dive. In that energy dive because yeah. I don't want people to think like, oh, Jordan oh, yeah. and Rashad, like all they do is like drink powder and like <laughs> eat vegetables. And it's like, no, like we do that because we want to perform at a certain level. Right. So when we know we need to show up the next day, we're not going to go mess that up by having something, you know, right. a big old plate of pasta. Like it's just not like that's not how we want to do. However, there are nights where we like, had a long few days or had a long couple weeks, whatever that might be, let's go to whatever spot right. and get fat. Right. We And we actually do this quite often. So frequently. One of the things that like we also like to get into is dessert. Like yeah. we just, we like dessert, but we know when we eat it, I, we not, I'm not working after. I can't get into nobody website and design nothing. I can't, you know, formulate my mind the next big idea, but I'm mm -hmm. still going to eat like all that ice cream. Right. So even when you when you prompt that conversation, and I'm not sure if this is the appropriate time to even bring this up, but like we know what tasks can be done versus what things cannot be done during those times. Right. Because I know my brain is going to be down. So like I try to choose what we call like assembly style tasks during those times. So yeah. if I know I basically got to put things together. Um, that we've already done the deep thinking about and there's already a roadmap. Then you can eat whatever you want. You can eat whatever is <laughs> kind of like, you know, just kind of sitting there, just kind of putting things right. together, right? Right. Which, oddly enough, is a large part of what people do professionally. Like, they're just a symbol. Yes. So they're not indexing for, like, being their sharpest because right. they haven't found that it's really important. Right. Right. So if you're yep. just going, and, and no disrespect to anybody whose job this is, but you know, if you are manning a desk and just checking people in, that doesn't require you to bring your A game in terms of your, yeah. your, your mental. mental. Like mentally, you're not right. like totally problem solving or creating something right. that doesn't exist. And so, yes, not, I mean, there is absolutely no shade, but it's just the, we're mm -hmm. just really overthinking and, and oversharing with you guys, like right. kind of how we've come to, yeah, like we really depend on a sound food routine and a sound right. awareness about what we put in our bodies and what the cycles thereby might look like. Right. And so let me add one thing about okay. like how we do attack those moments where um, we're gonna eat poorly and where we believe the trade-offs are. So um, I had a good friend who would always drink Gatorade. Like drink Gatorade, Gatorade all the time, all, almost all day. And if you look at the contents of Gatorade, like you're drinking hella sugar, you're, right. you know, like the carbohydrate intake is ridiculous. And I'm going, dude, why don't you just drink water all day and then have cheesecake mm -hmm. at the end of it? Right. You're getting the same intake. Now, I'm not suggesting that you should eat, eat cheesecake. And that's not my, my suggestion. I'm just saying, like, if you look at the, 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 the intake, like literally the sum value of all macros ingested. Yeah. It's, it's comparable. Same. No, for sure. And so if I'm, if I'm going to do that, I just realized that that's what I'm going to do. I'm like, I just had a right instead of eating or drinking a little bit of sugar all day it's correct. like let me drink my water because i know it's i know it's going to benefit me and mm -hmm. then later on i can have that cheesecake or whatever that yeah. is but um to like side note mm -hmm. my favorite gatorade flavor <laughs> ever of all time is fierce melon you ever had that the fierce melon one. I don't know, man. Give Do you me have the, a favorite flavor? Give me the blue or that was the only one that was different. Yeah, was the fierce melon? Otherwise, you just call them by color. Yeah, what aren't you calling by color though? Fierce melon. Don't just that one. Anyways, okay. So, 
<laughs> yeah, think like about it. another thing that I have found really helpful is I know this is going to sound boring. So like, don't turn your ears off when I say this, but basically eating the same thing every day mm. has I have found it so helpful. And the reasons why is because if I have found something that works for me to eat for breakfast and I don't lose any energy, mm-hmm. I feel good throughout the day my digestive system feels good or whatever. Um, and then I also know the items or the, the dishes or whatever that work for me for lunch, like a certain, maybe it's a certain salad or, you know, whatever that is, like it's, if it's fruit, whatever that looks like and dinner, um, like keeping things very routine and almost like eating the same thing. Mm. Um, not necessarily like just days and weeks at a time, but having your go-tos because in the moment that you don't really feel well, or you you know something has been thrown off, or maybe you do get like a small headache or something, you'll be able to trace it back to, oh, I ate this or I drank that. Like mm-hmm. that Coke I had probably had me a little, mm-hmm. acting a little crazy, because mm-hmm. I usually don't drink Coke right. or whatever that might look like, but at least you'll know, yeah, that's why I don't feel good, or yeah. that's why my, my brain isn't as sharp as I want it to be because I ate such and such. You're running a, an experiment on yourself where you know what the the variables are because they're outside of your diet. Yes, and that can be anything from like like tummy literally not feeling well to just oh my brain wasn't that sharp to maybe I did get a headache or you know That's I'm cool. able to really trace it back to like okay I stepped out of like the normal things that I eat mm-hmm. to have something with like a lot of hot sauce and I know why I have heartburn or whatever that right. looks like. Right. But it is really boring and I, I actually sometimes I feel like I get teased about it. Like, you know, you just eat salmon and vegetables all the time and it's like, yes and no. Well, I think about like, and, and I'm glad you shared that, that part of it because I think there are probably like two other points and only one comes to mind for me is um, removing the time spent on making a decision around what I'm going to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, and also one. saving time based on what um, I'm going to shop for too. No, that's exactly, I think, and- so it's like run the same routine right. when I go into the grocery store. Yep. Run the same yep. routine inside of the kitchen, right? And I can do those things without a lot of thought effort right. and I leave more of my decision-making up to like bigger, more important things right. that may have more impact in our business and professional world. Yeah, good point. Because that was the whole reason why I think that both of us really tuned into what we were eating and drinking was because yep. we wanted to be able to be our best creative selves in the in the you know business that we're in. But then also, and then just be able to show up for our clients, yep. you know, like on a very consistent, regular basis. Um, but then also just wanting to maximize our time. So when we go to the grocery store. I'm not trying to be in there all day. I'm trying to get what I need to get. I'm trying to get out. So with knowing exactly what vegetables you get, exactly where your, you know, the mm-hmm. meat is that you need or the protein, exactly where, you know, it's not a whole bunch of shopping and like grocery, like I have, like I'm able to look in our refrigerator really quick and know, okay, we need this, this, and this because we usually keep the same things in there right. all the time. Right, you know what's missing. Super quick. Much quickly, much more quickly. Um, I don't have anything there to add. I just want to 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 at least share that that um, being able to isolate what the problem is by having a consistent baseline. That's really brilliant. Yeah. That's really brilliant. And uh, and I didn't notice that I that I was probably thinking of like doing that. Mm-hmm. But your awareness of it is really dope. Because well, but because I think it started with well, let me just make sure that like when I go to cook at the end of the night, I'm not having to put because this is a thing also with working in a creative field you might have had a day that was super dense really heavy a lot of phone calls a lot of different stuff Mm -hmm. and so the last thing you want to do maybe not everybody but sometimes is like have to put together a meal where you got to read the recipe and the the directions and you got to focus you got to make sure you put Mm -hmm. the you know you stir in this at the same time you dropping this in the pan or whatever that looks like it's like if i just am able to cook the same things over and over it's muscle memory i don't really have to think about it a lot boom and i know it's going to be good and you're available for something else yeah so that's where it started and then it ended up leading into weeks months and years later knowing that okay when i feel a certain way i know it's because i ate out of my my range of normal food right 
And look, I deal with that. <laughs> it, right. it's, it's, usually, it's usually worth it. <laughs> For sure. I'm impressed. But we have, um, we have a couple minutes left. Um, is there anything else that like you're like, this has really like made a difference in? No, I think everybody should spend some time researching uh, diets that work for them and try to figure out what the thing that you can do that you can adopt for a lifetime and only replace it when you find something that's more valuable and more useful. Yeah. And not use any diet or have any diet solution that is fad or short term. I think you're wasting your time, wasting your effort. You're learning something that doesn't benefit you to learn. Right. If you're just going to apply it for a week, two, three months, like I why would you learn something? Things. Yeah, that's so. That is called bad learning. And there's yeah. no other way to kind of think about that. And I'm sorry if you're offended, but you should be told that you have better things to do with your time and your life than learn something that's not going to be useful Long for term. the duration of your yeah. life. Yeah, like why would you do something for 30 days? Like if you're going to do something, do it stick with it mm -hmm. but that's it stay sharp again best practices useful applications things that really helped us push our creative mindset forward and you can follow us on instagram um i am jordan ray and at rashad tyler yes our business handle is rare label r-a-i-r-e-l-a-b-e-l and then our website is rarelabel.com. And um, hit us up if you want to know anything else. All right. Talk in a bit. <laughs> Later.